All right, so before we move on to integration, we're going to look at what's called an initial value problem. We're going to do a couple of these. Um, so this is a, a very typical problem, um, and, and moving into sort of a more practical problem that's associated with finding antiderivatives. Right? So there are a lot of scenarios, especially coming out of, say, physics and chemistry and biology, where um, you have information about how some quantity is changing, right? which means you have information about derivatives. Right? Um, and you might know the value of that function at some particular point, right? Now, often um, the, the independent variable will be t rather than x because we're thinking about things that are changing with respect to time, um, right? And then this might be what's called the initial value, right? When time is zero, that's where the word comes from, right? Here we're using x as the, as the independent variable, but the, uh, the language remains, okay? So we have some particular value for our function, and we know the derivative. Um, from those two pieces of information, we want to recover the original function. Uh, so what we know is that if we have the derivative and we want to get back to the function, well, this function should be an antiderivative of the one that we have. So we know that, well, we know two things. First, that f of x should be, and now with a bit of practice, you might be at the point where you can just write down these antiderivatives. Um, so we say, what function has 2x as its derivative? Well, that's x squared. Um, what function has negative sine x as its derivative? Well, that's cosine. And of course, there might be a constant, right? So we have this constant, right? Undetermined constant of integration. But we also know that f of 0, well, on the one hand, it has to be equal to, we can just put in x equal to 0, right? 0 squared plus cos 0 plus c, but it also has to be equal to 2, okay? And so then we say, okay, well, what, is that, what does that mean? Uh, 0 plus cosine of 0 is 1 plus c has to equal 2. Therefore, let's see, what 1 plus what equals 2? Oh, we know that. That goes all the way back to like Barney the dinosaur, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. There we go. Uh, so c equals 1, and that means that the function we're looking for is x squared plus cos x plus 1. 